Let me see. Let me hear. Hello, I'm Bruce Shane, and today I have my students doing an activity on static electricity and the behavior of materials at opposite ends of the triboelectric series. We find that chemicals at the top of the list give up electrons and become positively charged, while chemicals at the bottom of the list gain electrons and become negatively charged. So we're going to take a look at pairing up chemicals from opposite ends of this table. So let's get started. My students would start off with two pieces of vinyl. One piece they would attach a string to and hang it up from the bar or a table. The second material is acetate. Once again, they would have two pieces. They would hang one of the pieces up from a bar or a table. Our first test is simply to bring the materials near each other without actually rubbing them. And when we do that, we'll find there's really no reaction. Now let's try rubbing that vinyl strip with wool. Now when we do this, I do want to rub both the strips. I'll start with the one that's hanging down. Get both ends of it. There we go. And now I'll rub the second strip with the wool. Bring it near. And it pushes it away. Now why is it doing this? Now the process we're looking at is sometimes referred to as friction charging. The word triboelectric, well, tribo comes from the Greek word meaning to rub. And electric, of course, refers to the positive and negative charges. But it's not really friction that's creating the charge. It's actually a chemical reaction due to adhesion. Now, these vinyl strips are evenly charged, but when I rub them with wool, what I'm actually doing is depositing electrons on them, so overall they become negatively charged. And when negative charges get near other negative charges, they repel, they push each other away. Look, try doing it the other way. And see if it's just the... And no, your skin. It's just it's just skin. Well, so you're, no, it just absorbs. Oh, it is working. No, it isn't. It's, it's working. It Look. Yeah, it works. Now let's try it again. In this case, I'm going to use the acetate strips and rub them with the Orlon. And as I get it near it, once again, we see that it's pushing it away also. Now in this case, when I rub the acetate strips with Orlon, I'm actually removing electrons, and that's going to make them positively charged. Once again, when I have positive charge near a positive charge, they're also going to repel each other or push each other away. So our next test will be what will happen if we bring the negatively charged strip near that positively charged. I'll rub the vinyl again with the wool and make it negatively charged. We see it's repelling that strip. And when I get it near the acetate, we see that it attracts it. Now let's try it with the two acetate strips. Once again, they push away, but if I bring it near that vinyl strip, once again, there's our attraction. I remove electrons and the acetate becomes positively charged. I rub the vinyl and add electrons so it becomes negatively charged, and the positive and negative charges attract. Now one more note, it's important to remember that both materials get charged. When the acetate gets positively charged, this orlon, as we can see, is now negatively charged. Now that we've established our charges, we can try other materials on that table and see if they behave the same way. My next test is going to be glass and polyester. In this case, I'm going to use a test tube and rub it with a piece of polyester cloth. It attracts the negative charge and it repels the positive charge. Therefore, the glass must be positively charged. Let's try two more. I'm going to take saran wrap and rub it against my hand. And the saran wrap should become negatively charged. And that's what we see here. It's pushing the vinyl, but it's attracting the acetate. I rub this comb through my hair a few times, it pushes away the vinyl and attracts the acetate, which means it must be negatively charged. Now I rub this balloon on my head. It's also pushing away the vinyl, which means it's going to attract the acetate. Yes, it is. So it's going to be negatively charged. So we can use all sorts of materials. Here's a plastic flamingo that's sold as a lawn ornament. I can rub it with wool, or in this case I used fur. Once again, we see that it repels the negative and attracts the positive. 
we found that the materials don't even have to be at opposite ends of that table. I'm going to replace the urlon and simply rub the acetate with paper. And since acetate's higher on the list, it's the material that would become positively charged. Now once again, I want to rub both strips. What's that one? And I'll rub the second one here. There we go. And once again, we see the acetate pushing away the acetate. Now this repelling of objects with the same charge on it opens up all sorts of fun activities. For example, if we cut a loop out of a bag, Now the next step is I'm going to take a PVC pipe and that loop and rub them either with a piece of wool or in this case I'm using fur. I'm going to rub it on here also and it's going to build up the same charge. So these two objects are going to repel each other. So when I put this above this, <laughs> try it again, we can actually get it to float. I just find that amazing. Now let's try it once more. Let me see if I can do it with my plastic flamingo. Put up a nice charge on them. There we go. Put this up in the air. And yeah, we can do it with this too. Now let's try a little experiment with these balloons. If I take them and rub them against my head, we know of course that we're depositing the electrons on the balloon is becoming negatively charged. <laughs> I can feel my hair standing up here. So that one's charged. And let me do the same thing to this one. And now if I release them, They repel each other. And if I bring my hand in between them, let's see what happens. They're attracted to the positive charge on my hand. And if I put my hand away, once again, they repel. They attract to my hand. Let's see if they repel again. Let me try it with my head. <laughs> Rub them this way. Now even Van de Graaff generators depend on the turboelectric series to build up huge amounts of static electricity. Whether we're talking about my classroom model or much smaller models that are available commercially or even ones that you build. Now let's take a look inside. Here we see the bottom pulley which is connected to a motor and there's a large rubber band that's stretched over top of it and it goes up through this column and is connected to the upper pulley and we'll take a look at it. And here's the upper pulley. This pulley is made of an acrylic glass. As the pulley at the top turns, it attracts electrons and removes them from the big metal dome. The rubber band carries them to the bottom where they're removed from the generator. And then the rubber band goes up and gets more. Now, since the electrons are being removed from that dome, it's making it positively charged. Now since this dome is positively charged, these sparks are actually giving electrons back to the generator. Now the static box as I showed in a previous video also depended on the turboelectric series to get a static charge. All I had to do was rub my forearm against the plastic. In doing so, my arm gives up electrons, making the surface of the plastic positively charged. The movement of the balls was described in a previous video 
and in a future video we'll take a look at it in depth with other versions. Now, once we understand a little bit about static charges, there's all sorts of demonstrations we can try. Now, in an upcoming video, we're going to take a look at additional experiments, such as charging by induction and conduction. Once again, I'd like to thank you for stopping in, and come back and see me again. Bye!